Well, you know, uh, we worked, uh, John Scheinfeld is the producer, director. And uh, so we spent two years together. We went to Brazil, we filmed a lot of stuff down there. And uh, I never saw anything until he called me to see the, the first cut two years later. And that was really, it's a very emotional experience for me to, you know, to see my life in front of me, you know, going back to my childhood and, you know, my family, my friends. And uh, it was very, very moving, very, very moving experience for me. Some artists are just doing it for the love of the art. And I think that's what Sergio does. Well, the 50s, I was still in Brazil. Um, I was, uh, actually, I saw, I saw when Quincy came to playing horn in, in, in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, I think 1957, 58. And, uh, but um, I was playing at a nightclub, as you saw on the documentary. And uh, so 59, it's like the beginning of the Bossa Nova, which is beautiful songs, Antonio Carlos Jobim. And I had, uh, you know, trio quartets. I was listening to jazz. Um, and then came Carnegie Hall in 62, the first Bossa Nova concert. And that's where I met Cannonball Wadley and Dizzy Gillespie and all the great guys that I, you know, I always loved. And uh, so that's my beginnings, you know, jazz and Brazilian music and, um, and several bands. Great melodies, great songs. And, you know, I'm listening to that incredible music. And at the same time, I'm listening to Horace Silver and Antelonius Monk and, uh, you know, and I'm saying, I mean, I'm a little kid. I'm 19 years old in Rio and uh, dreaming about one day coming to the United States. I mean, for me, I'm very curious and I'm always trying to find new things and to write new songs. And so uh, I think the first time that I really, I mean, that I could see that was, that what, what I was doing was becoming successful was when I heard the, Mashkinado on the radio in the United States in 1966. That was like, wow, they're playing my song. And uh, so that, that felt great. Something that was going on in Brazil to the whole world. He's able to um, span the generations by collaborating with new artists and, and up and coming artists. It, uh, the record company uh, called me at the time and said, listen, we're thinking about doing a uh, documentary about you and would like you to meet, you know, some, so they sent me, a, a, you know, two or three names and they sent me the, the documentary that John did on Coltrane and uh, Harry Nilsson. And, uh, and I saw that and I love it. I said, wow. Then he came to the house and we've met and I, I like him immediately. And we kind of, you know, we loved and, uh, I said, let's go, let's do it. And it was a great, he's a, he's a dear friend now. And uh, we had a wonderful time in Brazil. He's very creative. And uh, he was able to get a lot of footage from uh, CBS and, you know, from NBC, whatever. You know, things that I've done in the past and I was amazed. At. There was a, even in Brazil, we got a lot of old footage that, that i never seen it before. So yeah, he did an amazing job. We're partners in that. I mean, I just turned 80, but, uh, you know, I'm always, I'm ready to work with you know, I don't know. I don't have a list in front of me. And, you know, I've been in this pandemic like everybody else and uh, been a very, very somber moments. But finally, I have a couple of gigs. I'll be playing the Hollywood Bowl in August. It's my first gig after the, the being confined at home. So I'm very happy about that. August 15th at the Hollywood Bowl. And then I have a concert in San Diego with the symphony in September. 
Okay. And then, you know, I hope to to be working because I love playing. I love going out. It's been, you know, it's been too long, for, you know, for, for me to be home. And, you know, I miss playing. I miss my band and uh, I still love it.